This is a warding damage dealing build for Dungeons and Trials. The warding's role in the team composition is going to be to provide Brittle, hence the name Britton. If you do not know what Brittle is, it's a debuff that causes the enemy to take 10% more critical damage. To begin the video, we're going to showcase a dummy purse where we do 100k DPS. And there are timestamps inside the video, so if you like, you can skip ahead. However, for those of you still watching, just know that this build is not made to optimize a dummy parse. This build is what I use inside of real game content, whether it be a dungeon or whether it be a trial. If you want more damage, there are modifications that you can do to the build and small tweaks and it will increase your overall damage. The gears, the skills, the CP, and everything I discuss in the video and in the description is all stuff I use in real end game content. Don't forget there are timestamps so you can skip ahead and that's totally okay for the parse. On the front bar, we have the Ice Staff Pillar of Nern with the precise trait for increased critical chance. The trait could be Nernhone for higher weapon and spell damage or Charge to increase chances of status effects. The Charge trait will give you the most DPS per second on a dummy. We use the Flame Glyph because we don't have too much sources of flame other than our Zahn's helmet. Um, but you could use the Poison Glyph and you can also use the Weapon Glyph. Either of those would be fine, but you should aim for something that would proc a status effect that deals damage and you don't currently have it inside of your build. And then next on our back bar, we have the Master's Ice Staff. We use the Increased Weapon Glyph. This is going to be the best in slot. And then also we're going to use a charged um, trait for the weapon. And the reason for this is that we want to make sure that we're keeping up the Brita at all times. And this is going to make sure that we get the chill stats effect as often as possible. Um, I did mention that the charged trait does give you the most DPS per second on a dummy. And that is true. However, there's some cheese to it because 
on a boss, it's not like you can stack status effects. So you have 12 people putting on status effects and you probably aren't going to get your biggest bang for your buck with charged while doing that. But on a dummy, you only have one person giving those status effects and that's going to be you. And, and on dummies, it's very impressive, the damage it does. So I sidetracked a little bit, but going back to the Ice Master staff, what it does is this. This reduces the cost of Destruction Touch by 10% and increases our weapon and spell damage when we use Destruction Touch by 600 for 4 seconds. We will use Destruction Touch or its morph inside of our rotations simultaneously with our spammable the Cliff Racer. And we're going to discuss that more when we get into the skills later into the video. We are running a complete monster set, the Zahn's helmet and shoulders. Both gears will be light armor with the Divine's trait. This build will assume that we have an ideal team composition. That means that we have Minor Breach, Major Breach, the Roar of Alkosh, um, Element of Catalyst, and also other ideal team composition buffs and debuffs that a team may provide in regular content. For that reason, we can wear medium armor. And with that being said, we're going to be using a complete set of Reliquent on our body. The other gear set that we use is the Pillar of Nern, and that's also a medium armor gear set. So therefore, it doesn't really matter how you change, how you use the Reliquent and Pillar of Nern pieces. But I do recommend to keep Reliquent on your body. This way, you can use it on both your back and front bar because it's very easy to lose the Reliquent stacks, and you don't want to do that. Therefore, Pillar of Nern will be your jewelry. And I recommend for the traits on your jewelry is to be all infused and you can also do a combination of infused and bloodthirsty. However, as you've seen in our rotation, we have a dynamic rotation and we don't use no execution skills. So therefore, I don't recommend all bloodthirsty. However, the difference is very minute and it's not something you should worry too much about. Now we're going to discuss the skills and we're going to start on our front bar and we're going to read each skill starting from the left and going to the right. And the first one on the list is going to be our spammable and that's the screaming cliff racer. This skill sets enemies off balance. It also increases our weapon and spell damage. And while there are alternative spammables such as crushing shock and the destructive reach, when we combine the cliff and scream racer with the wording passive bond with nature, I believe it's the best spammable to use. The passive bond with nature states that when an animal companion skill ends, you are healed. And as you can see here, when I cast a cliff racer, I get healed. I cast it again, I get healed. This will do damage and at the same time slightly heal you. Continuing from the left to the right, we then have our next skill and that's going to be the stamina morph of Scorch called Subaterian Assault. This does massive AoE damage, poison damage, and that has the possibility of proccing the poison status effect on an enemy. When you time a spammable cliff racer with the subterranean assault, it really does massive damage in a short window of time. This provides the warding with very high burst damage. Now going to the fighter skill line, we have a skill called Barb Traps. It's one of the strongest dots in the game and it does bleed damage. It could also proc the bleed status effect which is great for us as a magic build because we are limited to bleed effects. Also, it provides a buff called Minor Force. This increases our critical damage by 10%. Due to us being a Warden in a Khajiit, the Minor Force is not necessary for us for reasons that I'm going to discuss at the end of the video. Now going back to the Animal Companion skill line, we have our first non-damaging skill called the Blue Betty. This skill summons a Betty that will restore our Magicka through a tither and it costs nothing to cast. It has a decent uptime and should be activated at all times. Also while it's active it grants us the buff Major Brutality and Major Sorcery which increases our weapon and spell damage by 20%. While this is not a damaging ability by itself it does increase our overall DPS by providing more spell damage and granting us more sustain. The last skill on our front bar is going to be the Fetcher, which is also called the Flies. This skill improves the value of the warding and team compositions because the Flies increase the damage enemies take by 5% through a debuff called Minor Vulnerability. This skill is a decent dot and in trial teams it's expected that a warding will provide the Flies so you should always have it at slotted. If not, you should always have points on it so that you can slot it in times of need. So that's it for our front bar. But before we go to our back bar, 
I have discussed a lot of things about status effects, buffs and debuffs, so I do want to show you how to find out about these things. If you hit start and then you scroll down to help, and then from here you click on tutorial, go to tutorial and then begin scrolling all the way down and keep going. And then when you eventually find combat, click this one. When you click combat, you then can scroll down a bit and eventually you're going to see um, where it says status effects. At the very top of the list, the third one down, you have Frost, which is the one I keep referring to, which is called the Chilled Status Effect as well. And you can scroll down more and you can see the Bleed Status Effect and all the other ones. Continuing down more, you see that there's buffs and there's also debuffs after that. The buffs are going to discuss things like Major Savagery, Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, etc, etc. And then the debuffs will mention all things that I've discussed on debuffs. And as you can see, one of the last ones at the very bottom is going to be Minor Brittle. Now going to our back bar, the first skill we have is not a damage skill and it's also not a frost skill. However, it's very useful and I recommend keeping it up at all times. And this is going to be my favorite spell and it's called Lotus Blossom. This skill, while active, it heals you or a teammate whenever you complete a heavy or a light attack. And because we're always light weaving in between skills, we are constantly healing. Also, when it's active, it grants you the major savagery and prophecy buffs, which increases your critical rate by approximately 2,600. When you combine the Lotus Flower with the Blue Betty, it really makes the wording a powerful, self-sustaining DPS. The next skill that we're going to discuss going from left to right on our back bar is going to be in the Winter's Embrace skill line and it's called Winter's Revenge. This casts an AoE on the ground and it increases the enemy's chances of getting the chill status effect. Combining this with other frost skills on our back bar, we're going to have 100% uptime for Brito. The third skill on our back bar we're going to discuss is Destructive Reach. This is a morph from Destructive Touch, so it does count in regards to our back bar Ice Master staff that we're using. And we're going to use this simultaneously with our spammable so that we can maintain the 600 increase of weapon and spell damage. By itself, the skill is not that great. It's a decent dot, but when you combine it with the Master's Ice Staff, it does become very powerful. It's good to use, and if you want, you can completely use it as a straight spammable, as many Britain builds do that. Going back to our Winter's Embrace skill line for the warding, the next skill we're going to discuss is Arctic Blast. This does damage over time, but it's stationary around the caster and it can possibly stun enemies. However, the main reason we use this skill is actually because it has an extraordinary high amount of burst heal. And sometimes it's going to help us out whenever we need that emergency heal. As you can see here, it heals us for 10 to 17k for each use. Lastly, in our destruction skill line, we have the Unstable Wall of Elements. This provides a damage shield, it reduces the enemy's armor, and it's also a great source for frost AoE damage. It is a costly skill, so if you wanted to get rid of it, I think that would be totally fine, and you're not going to lose out on too much damage, and in fact, some skills probably do more damage than it. So I do want to take some time out to talk about critical damage. If I hit start and I go to character, and then I go to advanced stats, you can see that I have a um, critical damage rate percent of 42%. And then if I go to the trial dummy and I hit it, I get major force, which increases my critical damage by 20%, which means now I'm at 62%. And then I can set traps down to get minor force, another 10%, and that puts me at 72%. To summarize how this works, I'm a warding and I have the passive advanced species. We said this increased my critical damage by 20%. Then we have feline ambush, which increased my critical damage by 12%. Dexterity from the medium armor skill line increased at another 10%. Next, we have the debuff from elemental catalyst, which is another 15%. Minor Force from the Traps, which gives us an extra 10%. And then we have Major Force from Ideal Team Composition, which gives us another 20%. And then Minor Brittle, because we are a Brit Den, um, so that's another 10%. When you add all that up, that's a total of 147% critical damage, which is over the 125% critical cap. For this reason, I don't believe the Khajiit is the best in slot and for the race. 
the best in slot will be the high elf and then secondly it's going to be the dark elf i recommend the dark elf the most just because it's going to give you more flexibility and versatility in case later down the line you ever want to be a stamina build um, as it does have good passes for both magic and stamina however i'm a khajiit because khajiits are just the best i don't mind the critical damage the video does make an assumption and the assumption is that we always do um content with ideal team compositions which just is not true the last thing i want to say is that we are a trial build and if you're in a trial and no one's wearing element of catalyst ec then you can switch out the pillar of nern for the element of catalyst and then just simply switch your spammable from the cliff racer to crush and shock this will really improve the quality of your warding and the team composition as you'll be providing ec brittle and also the flies so you're going to be a great option to choose for the teams with all the complexity in the rotation for the light weave and the bar swapping and everything i said about crit damage if you thought that was overly complicated i do have a link right there and that's going to be the one bar heavy attack warding build it's simple to follow it's practical you can use it in all end game content it does moderate damage and it has very high survivability feel free to check it out and i hope that you like it